All right, guys, the 2023 NFL Draft is happening very soon, and in yesterday's video, we did the NFC version of this, which will be linked at the end, and in today's video, we are going to do the AFC version, and there are 16 teams to discuss, so without further ado, let's begin. And we are starting today's video with the Houston Texans at number two overall. Full transparency, this video is being recorded Tuesday morning, two and a half days before the draft. So if any big trades happen between now and the release date, well, at least you know the background. But I truly believe Houston should draft Will Anderson from Alabama for multiple reasons. They were in love with Bryce Young, but won the Week 18 game against the Colts, and they should not force a quarterback at pick two. When a talent like Anderson is there, of course. We've seen over the past few years what D'Amico Ryans can do with a good pass rush in San Francisco, and in this conference especially, you need pass rush. Take Will Anderson and don't overthink this if you're not in love with a quarterback. Indy, on the other hand, has tried the veteran quarterback route for years, and GM Chris Ballard is officially on the hot seat. It's now or never time for him as the GM, and everyone knows they need to leave the draft with a quarterback. I would personally prefer them to wind up with CJ Stroud, as pairing him with Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman would be extremely beneficial for, well, everyone. They cannot afford to exit Thursday night without their franchise signal caller of the future. The Philip Rivers, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryans of the world, and the experiments are over. It's time to figure out who is the guy for Indy's future, and I don't think their roster is awful by any means, and if they fast-track Stroud's progression, I think this team can be a lot closer to competing than people realize. Tennessee is next up, and at the moment they have pick 11 and have been linked to moving up in the draft, and truthfully, I don't think they should, and here's why. This is new GM Rand Carthon's first draft, and if he moves up to take Anthony Richardson or whoever and gives up next year's first to do so, I don't think they have the offensive weapons from a receiving standpoint to seriously compete, and I think it would be way too aggressive of a move for a first-year GM. That's obviously not saying to never be aggressive, but there's a chance they have either Paris Johnson or Peter Skaronsky fall into their lap at pick 11, which would seriously help this franchise out for not only 2023, but for years beyond. Mike Vrabel is a good head coach, and I do not think a GM's first move should be to go balls to the wall for a player, even as exciting as Anthony Richardson can be, especially when there's as many holes on the Titans team as there is now. I know it's boring, but this team was at its best a few years ago when they had a solid offensive line, and this is the key to getting back there. Jacksonville is looking to take the next step in the AFC as their season ended in the divisional round of the playoffs with a 27-20 loss to the Chiefs. And for any team picking in the 20s, it's obviously going to depend on how the board plays out. If Brian Branch, the defensive back from Alabama, is there, I don't think it's much of a debate in the Jags' war room, and I think they make this pick without hesitating. If, in this scenario, Branch is not there, there are a couple of guards I like mocking to them, like Osiris Torrance from Florida, who is a big, nasty guard that would immediately help protect not only Trevor Lawrence, but help pave the way for Travis Etienne. And if Torrance is not the pick, then I also like Steve Avia from TCU, who has guard and center flexibility. I like any of these guys for the Jags, and am eager to see how they defend the AFC South in 2023. And from the AFC South to the AFC West, we go to discuss the Raiders. This is an extremely tough decision, and like how we just said with teams in the 20s, it depends on how the board plays out. I am not a believer in Jimmy G, and I very much think the Raiders should draft a quarterback. However, giving up a 2024 first to move up four spots to number three overall is an entirely different discussion, and I do not think they should do that. I've mocked that to them, thinking that's what they would do, which is different from what I would do. And they're in a division with two great quarterbacks, and Russell Wilson could very easily bounce back this year, and I think the decision for them is simple. You're not going to hold Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to 13 points every time you play them, but you can try. And how do you do that? Take the best defensive player available at number 7 overall. 
The next AFC West team on the clock is the Chargers at 21, and I've mocked Bijan to them a few times, but as we get closer to the draft, it does not look like he's going to be there. The Chargers have two more years of Justin Herbert at a discount, and I don't think anyone disagrees that Herbert has the talent to be a Super Bowl winning quarterback, he just needs a little help. And Keenan Allen was a third round pick all the way back in 2013, and will play this season at 31 years old. The decision here is pretty simple, especially if Zay Flowers is available at 21. Get a good receiver and improve the offense and continue to give Justin Herbert weapons. They brought in Kellen Moore this offseason to be their new offensive coordinator, and with how loaded of a running back class this is, you can still get a running back on day two and be fine. Draft a receiver if Bijan is not there. The Chiefs have the 31st pick, not the 32nd pick, because of the Dolphins getting their first round pick taken away, and I think there are two routes Kansas City can go with their first round pick. Their current receivers are Marcus Valdez-Scantling, Kadarius Toney, and Sky Moore, and they also have Justin Ross, who a lot of Chiefs fans are excited for. Draft Quentin Johnston if he's there, or whoever the best receiver available is. Travis Kelsey won't last forever, and Patrick will need more weapons a lot sooner than people may realize. And if the value isn't there at receiver, I think they can get one of the best pass rushers in the draft in BJ Ojolari. They got their power pass rusher in George Karloftis last year, and pairing BJ with George and having Chris Jones eat blocks in the middle would set up a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities for BJ Ojolari. Denver's first pick isn't until early in the third round, and with the situation they're in, with bringing in Sean Payton and expecting Russ to get back to the Seattle version of Russ, it's pretty simple what they need to do with pick 67 and ultimately pick 68 as they have back-to-back -back picks in the third round. Take whoever the best player available is. It really doesn't matter the position as they can use depth anywhere. Even if it's a running back, it wouldn't be bad to have depth behind Javante Williams. I know they signed Samaji P. Ryan, but getting a good running back at a discount for four years is never a bad option. Denver expects to be back in 2023, and will they of course is an entirely different discussion, but how do you quote unquote get back? You acquire good football players. BPA approach for Denver for the entire 2023 NFL Draft. The first AFC North team on the clock is Pittsburgh at pick 17, and with three picks in the top 50 thanks to the Chase Claypool trade, I am firmly under the belief they should use pick 17 and 49 to jump up to the 8 or 9 area to go get the best tackle in the draft. You have to protect Kenny Pickett more than you did in his rookie year, and if you don't, you risk him picking up bad habits because he feels pressured all the time and feels like he has to get the ball out as quick as he can. This team is good and certainly has its fair share of talent, but left tackles do not become free agents often, and there's a reason for that. Teams that draft them lock them up for a long time. Of course, there's exceptions like Laramie Tunsil, for example, but for the Steelers, go get your guy. And even if they don't trade up, draft a left tackle at 17 regardless. Baltimore has pick 22, and I think there are two ways they can go with this pick, and it of course depends on how many of each are selected in front of them. In the best case scenario, they get corner Deontay Banks from nearby Maryland, or Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State. I think it's a safe bet Jackson Smith Jigba will be gone by then, but the other option for Baltimore is receiver. Odell has had multiple lower body injuries, and I wouldn't count on him to be a multiple year player for this franchise. Former first round pick Rashad Bateman's career is up in the air after two injury riddled seasons, and obviously we hope he turns it around, but it's something to monitor at the moment, and it wouldn't hurt to get Lamar another receiver for not only 2023, but for years beyond too. Since he's first round pick is at number 28, and a lot of people have been mocking them Darnell Washington, and I think I did this in a mock on the channel once as well, but if Dalton Kincaid or Michael Mara is there, I am fully under the belief or mindset, we have all these weapons that people can't defend as it is, why not go get one more? I don't think running backs should be the number one priority for them in the draft, as this draft has loads of talent in the later rounds at the running back position, but if they were to draft Jameer Gibbs at 28, how could you be mad with that selection? He would be a 1,000 yard back from day one, and he would be in an extremely favorable situation right from the start. Gibbs, Kincaid, Mayer, or an offensive lineman that unexpectedly falls has to be the pick at 28. 
Cleveland's first pick is at number 74 due to the Deshaun Watson trade and recently acquiring receiver Elijah Moore from the Jets, and this team has to get better with pass rush as Miles Garrett can't do it all. They were one of two teams in 2022 to not have two guys get at least 30 pressures, and the other was the Chicago Bears, who finished with the number one overall pick. I know they signed defensive tackle Dalvin Tomlinson to kind of help with the run, but you're in a forget conference for a minute. You're in a division with Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and Kenny Pickett who isn't there yet but could be a solid quarterback soon. You need to be able to get after the quarterback. While Miles does an outstanding job at that, he needs help, and the Browns need to acquire another pass rusher. There was a pretty big trade in the AFC East, and the Patriots are now the first team in the East on the clock. The Patriots are entering a pivotal time with quarterback Mac Jones, and there was a big difference between him under pressure in 2021 and 2022, which can be attributed to several things. His offensive line, his receivers, of course him regressing could be one, or him pressing to make a play when nothing is there. And the Patriots need to help out their young quarterback before it's too late. I know they signed Juju in the offseason, but if they draft Jackson Smith the Jigba, I would love that, and if JSN is isn't there, I would never complain about a team drafting a franchise left tackle. The New York Jets are up, and as you can guess by the thumbnail, this one is very simple. Dwayne Brown will be 38 years old in August, and Mekhi Becton has played a singular game over the past two years. You didn't trade for Aaron Rodgers for him to run for his life, and like with Pittsburgh, if you have to trade up from pick 15, you do it. You're going all in for the Lombardi over the next two years, as this team is very good if they can stay healthy, and with Aaron Rodgers at 39 years old, you do what you have to to ensure he's protected well into January. Buffalo has picked 27 and got bullied in their most recent game against the Cincinnati Bengals, which was of course the divisional round of the playoffs. I personally love Ohio State tackle Dewan Jones, who is 6 foot 8, 375 pounds, and he would help solve this problem. Another position I wouldn't mind the Bills drafting is of course running back, but Dewan Jones type players do not come around often. Regardless for Buffalo, I think the pick has to be either tackle or running back, and like we've said with multiple other teams, if you want to wait on the running back for the second or third round, go for it. But you cannot be bullied at home in the playoffs again like you were this past year. The Dolphins only have four picks, and their first is at number 51 overall. And with the team's first pick coming outside of the first round, it's easier to project a position than a specific player due to a variety of reasons. So with the Dolphins, there's three positions they should specifically look into, and of course it's the best player available between these positions. Offensive line is one considering what happened last year to Tua, and they need to protect their guy, which also would in turn help the run game. Running back is another one, as I don't think Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson are the long-term guys, and this is the class to find your running back. And believe it or not, the same thing applies to tight end, as Durham Smythe and Tanner Connor are not the long-term guys there either. Mike Gesicki went to the Patriots this offseason. The best player available between these positions at number 51 should be the pick for Miami. I hope you enjoyed the AFC version, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, as it would mean the world and help the growth of the channel a ton. My Patreon and Twitter links are in the description if you're interested in following on there, and until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.